put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Sniper Elite Video Game Review You are the son of a US diplomat who spent much of his youth in Berlin and now that the Second World War has not only broken out but is nearing its end you are working for the OSS in Berlin because you you know the city very well and you are you wear a German uniform so that the Germans won't bother you although you do fight some Nazis and you are basically stationed there on a top secret mission you know the whole IMF protocol and everything and you are trying to stop the Soviet Union and Stalin's secret police the NKVD from obtaining a nuclear missile, as the protagonist puts it, he is the one of the first soldiers of the Cold War, even though the Second World War has not even ended. And right off the bat you do see some problems with this concept. No matter how well you might do with the game, basically the the historical achievement, and that's always something important to this kind of historically set action game. The most vital historical achievement you could hope for here is to delay the Cold War by a little, or d delay Stalin getting the nuke. There's, there's really not much of, you know, typically in this kind of in a World War II action game, you will be up against the Nazis, and you are helping to end the Nazi regime. But yeah, I, I should also point out, there's very little plot in this. It's really not very plot-driven. You do, on occasion, do something related to this main plot of trying to stop Stalin from obtaining the nuke. And certainly the NKVD make up most of your enemy encounters, or, you know, Soviet forces anyway. Sometimes you fight actual commando units. And, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of continuity to that. There's, but, but on the whole, it's really just your average World War II you know, shooter kind of thing with the typical objectives of such, you know, move from point A to point B, save this, you know, important person, perform sabotage, you know, kill this important person, stuff like that. Now, the, the real hook of this game is of course the the, the uh, accurate physics of the sniping and you know that's that's really why it's so focused on the sniping and these are quite well done they they I'm not sure they're always entirely realistic but they certainly do add to the challenge. Basically, you have the, the there's a bullet drop. The the bullet doesn't fly. The, the bullet sort of flies in an arc. So if you shoot it particularly far, you will have to correct your aim a little bit to account for bullet drop. There's there's wind strength. 
where you might have to adjust to either side of the, the target to account for that. You can control your breathing, you know, you, you can take a deep breath and then for a certain amount of seconds you will have, I think it's anywhere between 10 seconds and 25 seconds, your aim will be much more, you know, yeah, the, the, the scope will really not move except for when you make it move. Other, otherwise it will, you know, bob a little bit because of breathing. And I think there's also something about that the, your posture, you know, you, the, the, the average thing for this sort of thing, you can, you can be completely standing up, you can be crouching, you can be prone. And I think there's also something about that that affects it. And each of these can be turned on and off when you start an overall mission. And I, sh I should point out, each level is not a mission in itself necessarily. So you can't just from, you can't always from one level to another change difficulty. There are four difficulty settings, and with each of them you can see what of these bullet physics are enabled and which are not. And then there is a custom difficulty setting, which literally allows you to completely change each of the aforementioned settings on and off, and there are a handful of different difficulty settings for the AI, which is sort of the main difficulty setting thing. And there's, there's also this thing of you can go back and forth between having the scope ready or the binoc binoculars ready and back to a weapon. If that is on, then, you know, that'll be basically instantaneous. If it's off, it will literally take you about five seconds, a good four and a half seconds, to switch between any weapon or the binoculars. You literally watch as the, the character, this is in third person perspective, the only thing where it's in first person perspective is when you are sniping, when you have the scope up. And you will literally see the, the protagonist, I think he does have a name, but I've forgotten, and it's frankly because he has no personality. The... Yeah, but, but in general there's not much personality to the, the characters, and the... Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bland in that respect. But yeah, you will literally watch as he puts away his current weapon and pulls out the other weapon you've indicated. You really do not want to be caught like trying to snipe someone far away and then someone comes up close to you and then you have to switch to your submachine gun. You might just die in the time it takes you to switch weapons. And this is a really clever way to approach these much more challenging aspects of the game because the actual challenge of the game remains, you know, present. The, the integrity of the challenge has not been compromised. And at the same time, you can play this even if you aren't up for the full-on challenge. In fact, I would suggest, if, if you're not really sure about some of the, you know, build physics, just, you know, for each, you know, to toy around with the, the settings a little bit, see which, you know, which suits you. I should n note that if you do play it on custom, you can't earn any things called points of fame. The, the points of fame and the difficulty settings make up the replayability of this game. Basically, it's... It's via GameSpy that you can, you know, you can share with and, and compare your score to other players via that. 
And in fact, I, I can get into the points of fame briefly. Basically, there are a number of bonus score. Yeah. Where, where you can, if, if you perform something that is particularly difficult, you earn extra points. This is for if you get an accurate shot that's particularly far away and it'll literally, literally give you a count of how many meters the shot was. Yeah, metric system for the win. And, you know, there's, if, if you, if you shoot someone who was a moving target, if you get a headshot from particularly far away. And some of these will also give you the bullet cam, which is basically a bullet time. You know, you, you follow the bullet as it goes into the target in slow motion, and when it hits, you will literally see some blood, and there's also some other matter. It's kind of unspecific, but, you know, it's it's it has nothing on later gore, but you you can feel that you just you hit them and there was an impact there. The the sound and the you know the gore that there is 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 quite sufficient for that. And the Yeah and, and then there there are two for one, three for one, and I believe even four for one bonuses, which is Basically, your bullet will go through more than one target. So, if there is more than one target aligned, yeah, the bullet will... And, and you follow it as it moves through the first target and into the additional targets. So, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Then you can... And, and there's also silent kills, which is... The, the only gun that you have that is silenced is your handgun. And using that, if, if you kill a target so quickly that he doesn't have time to yell for help or, like, you know, fire his gun at you, then you get a silent kill. And usually this will be a, a headshot. And these are a lot of fun. They're, they really make it worth actually setting up a perfect shot. It's, I mean, that that's sort of the thing with with stealth and sniping and stuff like that in games. You really do have to sell your audience on it. You have to give them a reason why they don't just go play that over the top shooter instead. And I mean, I'll be honest. I love stealth, but even I sometimes. You know, you, you just, you need more of an incentive. There, it's, it's just, it, it takes patience, and not everyone has that kind of patience, and certainly that kind of patience has to be rewarded by the game. And this game does do a lot to reward the patience. Other sort of interesting things you can do with your sniper rifle is that you can detonate grenades on an enemy's belt. Now, as far as I understand, this isn't entirely realistic, but it is really, really cool. It's, you know, obviously a good way to take care of several enemies with just the one bullet. You can detonate fuel tanks on trucks and even some tanks. And if, if the tank does not have a, you know, a, a fuel tank, you, you're basically shooting the little cap thing that you, you know, unscrew to refuel the thing. And as far as I understand also, this is, again, quite unrealistic, but it's a lot of fun. Especially if, if the truck is driving directly towards you, you have a very small target. Now, the, yes, if, if you can't take out the tank with the fuel tank, then you may actually have to, you know, oh, you might also have the, I think it's called the Pan Panzer Shrek, which is, you know, your, your average 
rocket launcher, and if you can get to the side of the tank and then fire it, yeah, you can take out the tank like that. But you might not have a Panzer Shrek, or you might want to save it up because, like I said, some missions take place over several levels. You might not get to pick up more ammo for, for example, the Panzer Shrek. And you might encounter more tanks, so you want to plan ahead. And the other option is to place TNT again at the side of the tank. I've literally tried to place it in front of and it might not destroy the tank. At the side of the tank, again, get some distance between you and the tank and then detonate the, the little stick of TNT. Yes, yeah, it's the three stick thing, or maybe five, of TNT. Detonate that with a sniper bullet. So again, it's it, they, they really sat down and thought of what can we do to make the sniper rifle you know, so important that they'll forgive that there really are only three types of weapons in this game. Or, you know, bullet weapons anyway. And I, sh I should say, the, the TNT, you don't have to manually walk up and place it, though that is, you know, you have complete control over where it ends up, like that. But no, you can toss it as well. And throwing things, this you know, regardless of if it's TNT, a hand grenade, or even the rocks that you can use to create sound distractions, you get an arc prediction, and yeah, it's it's really great. I, I love when stealth games actually do this, because it really, really helps. And yeah, the... the so, so there's a number of opportunities there, and if you are trying to be stealthy and you have to use the sniper, there is the opportunity to hide the sound in artillery fire, and they did something quite clever with this when not, not for all the artillery fire, but some of it will literally be several impacts in, you know, in, in rapid succession. So there might be five. So you're sitting there, you, you know, you've got the sniper scope, you've, you've got it on target, you're completely ready, and you're just waiting for the next artillery, you know, for it to start, and the moment you hear that first impact, you fire it, and yeah, it's it's really cool like that. Now the on on the whole sneaking thing, the game doesn't always require sneaking. Although there are sometimes big consequences to not sneaking, like it might not cost you, excuse me, the, the level, but it might actually, it might make things considerably more difficult. Like if you are trying to provide cover fire for an escaping agent and you're told be stealthy so that you can get into a good position to support him to provide that cover fire, and you're not stealthy then the, you know, the enemy troops might, you know, approach you and it might just force the, the agent to run before you're in a good position to try to cover fire, so, yeah. Now, the, yeah, so, so basically, you know, you're always in the ruins of Berlin and they'll, either be very quiet and abandoned, or they'll be in the middle of a battle, or somewhere in between, a battle between the Soviets and the Germans, and regardless, you are an invading presence, at the very least to the Soviets. So you do have to very much 
yeah, keep, keep in mind that you may be, you know, you may become their biggest target if you draw too much attention to yourself. And the odds are against you. The, the Soviets, again, this is the, the last days of World War II, the Soviets were well in control. The, the, you know, the Nazis were no longer in control of Berlin. And the Soviets, you know, they, they see you, they think, ah, a Nazi. So, yeah, this, they have a ton of troops. And you are going to have to pass up on some fights. There are literally times where you see a tank and you're like, do I have enough ammo left for my Panzer Shrek? Do I have enough TNT? Do I just want to avoid this... The, the attention of this thing and just sneak past, and yeah. Now, the... There are... It is sometimes possible to adapt the, you know... Or rather, I should say, it's necessary to adapt to, you know, whether it's abandoned or if it's in the middle of a battle. You, you don't know going in, and you, you sort of have to get a feel for what is, what is going on in this area. Is, is it full of troops? Are the troops waiting for some, you know, just standing at the ready? Or are they kind of tired and just slacking off? What, what is the situation here? And it's... In some ways, that is a good approach. It, it did surprise me from... I, honestly, I've probably been terribly spoiled by the likes of Thief, but also Commandos and Hitman, where usually, you, if you sneak, if you don't draw attention to yourself, you can go completely unnoticed through a level. And that's just... A lot of the time not possible here. Sure, you have the one silenced, you know, gun, and yes, you can move bodies around, but this is a war zone, and you are very much in this sort of enemy territory. They're constantly waiting for just, you know, they're, they're ready for battle. You are not sneaking in to them kind of, you know, area that just, where they're just going about their business. There will be no sleekly walking away in your fancy Italian suit with no one having noticed that you were even there. It's, it's simply not possible in this game. It's, it's seldom possible, I should say. And, and, I mean, there will be times where, you know, several levels into a mission, you've caused so much, you know... I mean, even if you've been sneaking around, maybe you're going into a particularly high-security area, or maybe the Soviets just realized, hey, a lot of the guys around here are no longer responding, something's going on, and they'll send in more troops. Now, the... You do fight with some German resistance, which I'm fairly certain are not actually... From from my research, it appeared that they didn't really exist. I, there, were, there were Germans who tried to assassinate Hitler, but in this game, the German resistance are literally these bands of, you know, military... Groups. I believe they even have their own uniforms, because you don't, you don't really take, you know, you, you can tell the difference between them and the, the actual Nazis, so yeah. You do sometimes take out, you know, the, the guy inside a pillbox, you know, the big, you know, we're not talking about the, the, you know, sandbags in front of a machine gun, no, we're talking like a concrete building with a couple of window holes, and you got to take out the, the gunman in there, because he's got, 
you know, he's just waiting for someone to approach, and he can he can see a lot. Or you might take out a lookout and stuff like that. I'd say the game works best when it 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 adheres very strictly to the sniping and the stealth. The when when it goes for more of an action beat, it a lot of it just doesn't work quite as well and you know, you the the big problem is that the third person shooting is quite a bit more awkward than it really needed to be. It's the, the, this game is from 2005, so it really doesn't have any kind of excuse. If we're talking like other battle kind of... Honestly, I haven't played a lot. I'm gonna have to just compare it to Star Wars Battlefront. I know, I know. It's, yeah. That game is far, far better at just... Yeah, it, it works like a good third-person shooter. You can see where you're aiming. You don't... Yeah, and in this, it just does not work quite as well. There are also a couple of features that there's supposed to be like a wall hugging feature. I could never get that to work. And there isn't a cover firing system, which is, it's forgivable because, you know, 2005, a lot of games didn't have. So yeah. Now, the... Yeah, so so the some some examples of the the better actually to to get into the the actually there's there's one thing that I neglected to mention about the cool things you can do with the sniping you can wound an enemy soldier and he will literally cry out for help and other enemy units will run to him and try to get him to safety so you know it's it's basically the first time Americans used the double tap now the yes so so there are some a, a lot of the locations are very samey like there's a lot of just going around the ruins of Berlin, and you see the same buildings over and over, and in, in a way that also just has its own problem with when, when you are just making a game out of just the ruins of somewhere, that that is a dark and dreary and grimy area that just isn't necessarily going to be that visually appealing. It's not going to hold our attention for that long. But when the game takes takes you out of sort of the inner city Berlin, it actually gets quite interesting. There is one level where you are climbing to, excuse me, the top of a French cathedral, which is also in at least partially in ruins, and you have to, yeah, you're, you're getting to the very top, and then you signal your ally, and he makes a run for it, and from up there you have to provide cover fire, with, you know, hundreds of meters away, and the, you know, you, you go to the Reichstag, their, their train station, it, those are more you know, those provide solid variety. Now, the... There, there are a couple of different, you know, times of day. The, there, there's sunny day, nighttime, and rain. And I will say the... Especially at nighttime, you can tell that this is too bright of a game. Like, it has quite good atmosphere. It... You, like I said, it's very abandoned and, and very quiet, very sort of... It, 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 almost as an illusion, it, it's quiet. It's like danger is lurking right around the corner, but you could swear there's not a soul around for miles. And then suddenly, 
you know, you're, you're taking fire or you spot someone with your binoculars or such. And this is also a game that does quite well at making your binoculars worth using. Like, if you, the, the sniper is this very, you know, you lose some of the, the screen from using it. And I believe you can also zoom further with the binoculars. So the binoculars are very good for just scoping out an area. Now the... but but yes, the a lot of the areas are just too bright, which is maybe also why rather than use the... you know, th this already takes one or two things from Splinter Cell, which I think is quite forgivable because it's different enough from Splinter Cell that, you know, it's in, in aspects I've already mentioned, in, in the heavy focus on sniping and things like that you can't avoid being spotted, which you can in Splinter Cell, at least, you know, you can avoid them, you know, noticing you if you're really, really careful. But yeah, this gets the the speed cycling on, on the, you know, on mouse wheel from Splinter Cell, which means that whether you are crawling on the ground, crouching, or standing up, you can choose how fast you move, which means that even crawling won't be that slow and if you are, if you pick up a body and you move it, you're going to want to slow down because otherwise you will literally make too much noise and they'll hear you. Now, the, the game does this great thing of when they're supposed to be speaking German or Russian, they actually, I mean, I couldn't confirm for sure the Russian, but certainly the German. And it gets subtitled to you, or you can choose to have it subtitled, so you can see what what their situation is. If they've given up looking for you, if they are searching the area, if they're reloading, things like that. But but yeah, if you're moving a body, you'll want to slow down. So you might have expected it to also go ahead and grab the light meter from Splinter Cell, which is you know, a fantastic aspect of the Splinter Cell series, but with how overly bright some areas of this game are, they opted instead for a stealth index, which operates entirely in 25% increments, and yeah, it's just supposed to give you an idea of how hidden you are. and. I, I, so one thing I do like is that the game is very clear about telling you this is only a guess. You might still be noticed if they look directly at you. And that that does bring, bring me to another issue with the game is that you can't be sure when you're like impossible to see or, or maybe it's that you never are impossible to see. In Thief, and I, again, I completely admit I've probably been spoiled by Thief. In Thief, if you stand still in the dark and no one walks directly into you, they can pass right by you, just, you know, inches away from you, and they won't notice you. If you're standing still, or, or at least moving slowly on, you know, on a surface that doesn't make a lot of noise. And there's no such thing here. You can't, you know, if, if someone looks in your direction, they will spot you, no matter how, you know, unless there's literally something blocking their view from where you are. And if you, you know, if you move fast, they will hear you. And this, that, part is maybe more forgivable because you really do kind of, you know, you're, you're moving around in ruins and on streets, so yeah. That's, that's something that, 
you, you might think that you'll be going into buildings and finding, you know, second story windows to, to snipe from. You're mostly just moving around on the ground. You can go into ruined buildings and there might be a way up to the roof, but that's it. There, there really isn't... You can only be so hidden. And that again, it's... It's potentially an issue I... I wish that the game did allow you to be like completely hidden to actually yeah to to go completely into that to maybe wear something that would be more camouflaged you know to move so slowly and in areas where, like, if you did choose to take the slowest route from where you start to your objective, that was also, like, the most well hidden. You know, if there was, like, consistent greenery that you could be, you know, just crawling through very slowly, and maybe every so often you'd have to stop and, you know, because some enemy is passing by that, or, or looking near where you are in the shrubbery, or something like that. But instead it is that you, you know, a lot of the time you really don't have an expectation of sneaking past, and you will have to take them out. That, that is one thing the game, the game does tell you, or the manual does tell you, you should be, every time you kill someone you should move to another place. To, to keep them guessing, and that is also very much a good tactic, and some of the expert snipers you face will do the same. Now, the... the there's also... Some, sometimes the enemies do appear to literally know where you are when that doesn't seem like it should be. Some people in, in reviews have complained about this. I understand why, but I do think that from what I noted, it was mostly in these later levels where you've already caused some destruction and the enemy might basically know you're around somewhere, so they're looking for you very aggressively. They're expecting to find you. So that, that can help explain that, but again, it it takes some away from the... I, I don't know, I suppose really you, sh you want to classify this as not 100% stealth, or not the kind of stealth where you literally can completely avoid being noticed, but stealth in the way that you don't directly engage every enemy, stealth in the way that you, you'll want to know about the enemy, before they know about you, so that you can take them out before. That is something I, I quite like that you can be fired upon in this game and you won't immediately be able to tell where it's from. Like, you, you get the indication on the, you know, little compass thing. You know, you get an indication whether it actually hit you or whether it just hit near you, but if you look in that direction, you might not be able to tell, because like I said, maybe the guy shot from a window, a second story window, with a sniper rifle, and then he immediately ducked. So by the time you looked up there, he was already gone from the window. And you then have to make the decision, do I deal with this guy now, who I, I know that he knows where I am, or do I take cover so the next shot doesn't kill me? You, you die from fairly few shots in this game. That's also something, at times the, 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 the enemies will fire much more accurately than their weapons should allow for. And that's also, you know, I, I respect that decision because it, it is again something that makes the game more challenging, and this is very much something that's affected by how high or high low how low the AI is set to be. 
but but yeah, realistically, they, the the guns back then wouldn't be able to. Yeah. Now, at times, this is as difficult as Commandos One, which, again, props for that very very much. There there are too few, you know, unapologetically difficult games. And like like I said, you can play this in a way that isn't quite that difficult, but if you want the challenge, the game provides. And th I believe the higher difficulty, the more the more you'll earn of the points of fame. So, yeah. Now, the... The game is too scripted in that the, the stalking and such loses some of the, the fun because you do have to make things happen a, a bunch of the time. Like, if you go to a certain area, then, you know, yeah, then, then something will happen. And it really, it would have been fantastic if the you know, almost in a real-time strategy kind of way, if, like, enemies just happen to be in certain areas, and if you made too much noise, they would just approach, rather than, well, you know, now you're in that area, so they start looking for you, and, and things like that. With that said, it is not a linear game. The, the basic level you're in will be fairly open. Like, there, there are paths that might be blocked off, or might be heavily guarded, but you, you can choose from several dif different paths to your objective, and the most direct won't necessarily be the best, or the, the safest. So, yeah, if, if you... It's again, you, you, you make that decision, do I take the safer, slower path, or do I sort of, you know, rush into it? That's, it, it balances fairly well. You, you have to find out, should I rush or should I wait? Because either can be deadly under the wrong circumstances. Now, the, the, the difficulty can be fairly uneven. It, yeah, it, it'll suddenly spike and other times go really down and, you know, levels that might seem like they'll be really long can sometimes be really short. Now, your basic level... I, sh I should talk a little bit more about the, the yeah, the, the basic setup. You will have some information on the map, like potential... You know, sometimes it'll list where where enemy like encampments are and the like, and you know you will be told like an early mission has you you have to take out a I think it's like a truck yeah a, a vehicle dump vehicle rearming station something like that. And then there's also this other camp of enemies. And you know going into it, as soon as you've taken out the camp of enemies, you have to take out the vehicle rearming. Like, literally, if you don't hurry, then there'll be too many enemies. Or, that's what the briefing says. Anyway, I'm not sure I ever really tested it. But, basically, you know going into the level that you have to hit both, and you know where both are. So you aren't accidentally going into the, you know, vehicle, you know, rearming place before you hit the other place. And both, both have these pillboxes. And I actually found that it was useful to go for the, tr the vehicle rearming dump take out those pillboxes before, or at least one of them, before I hit the other place, because then I would be able to go behind the, you know, the first group of pillboxes. And so, 
you know, you can plan like that. And again, without actually alerting the vehicle rearming the place, there's a tank there. So if you, you know, you're not going to be able to stealthily take out the vehicle rearming place. And if you start taking that out, then the other place finds out about it. So there's that kind of planning thing. It's, it's really not linear. It's, it's, it's overly scripted, but it is not quite linear. You can be working on several objectives at the same time. You will typically be told of more than one objective at a time. Now, the... You do... You, you can carry hundreds of bullets for your submachine gun, which it does seem a bit excessive, and it's again part of this whole, you know, at times it's motorcycle, at times it is overly action focused. And it, it makes sense, you know, they were probably worried that, you know, the game might not appeal enough to do, might not, yeah, might not have enough, a broad enough appeal if they didn't throw in some action as well. Now, I do quite like that the stealth starts out tough. It doesn't, you know, you don't really have any levels where it's just, you know, training wheels on. It's, it seems very difficult from the start, and then you get more used to it, and then you can sort of handle it. And, and that's also something... Even if it does seem very difficult at first, I mean, make sure you're maybe playing on a low difficulty if it seems really tough. But give it some more time, see if, you know, see if you can't get into it, because once you do get past, it, it has a bit of a learning curve. And once you get into it, then it really starts being a lot of fun, really, really tense. Now, the... You have some, I, I should just briefly talk about, the inventory controls, in, in general the controls could do with a bit of streamlining. The inventory controls are, I mean, you, you can get used to them, but they are excessively complicated. Like, you basically have to press the inventory button, then cycle through, and then once you find it, then there is a use inventory item button, which you don't want to confuse with your use button, you know, your interact button, or, and maybe this is, again, me having been used to, you know, other games, I, I just, I've been used to using the primary fire button, because that's, why wouldn't you select with that? But no, if you do that, then it fires the gun and switches away from the inventory, and I, my thinking is, once you're in the inventory, you're in the inventory. You, you'll want to be using the inventory. I, I'm also not entirely sure why they don't just use the same cycling as the speed cycling, you know, the, the mouse wheel. Again, once you open the inventory, you should be in the inventory. And some of them, after you've pressed use to choose the item, then you press use again to actually use it. So. It takes getting used to, and it's just, it's overly complicated. And like I said with the streamlining of the controls, or there should be streamlining of the controls, there are too many buttons to remember in this game, plain and simple. And at times, most of the time it does work out. But there are times where you will be trying to do a certain thing and then does another. Like, if you hold down the interact button, you might do a detailed search of the body in front of you, which takes time, but it allows 360 degree control of the camera, so you can look around if there's anyone. Uh, by the way, the bullet cam, if the bullet flies far enough, the camera might also rotate 360 degrees around the bullet. It always looks good, no matter how it's you know, rotating or whatever, it always looks good. Anyway, yeah, so... The, the, yeah, the, it, it might, you know, do a thorough search of the body in front of you, or it might 
put down your current gun or in your current submachine gun, it's the only one you can really swap out. There are there's more than one sniper rifle in the game, but when when you get to a new one, you just start using the new one. You know, you do have to swap them, but then that's it. You know, so there are those three options for holding down the interact button, and yeah, sometimes you're trying to do one and it does the other, and in a game where seconds count, you might get shot. That, yeah, that really sucks. And again, I just, I know I harp on this point. In in general, I I harp on a lot of the same points, but I don't see why, you know, stealth, you know, games like this don't just use the approach of the first Hitman game, Codename 47, where you point the mouse pointer to what you want to what you want to interact with, and then you right click, and then you scroll through a list of options. It never messes up. It always works exactly the way it's supposed to, and it's instantaneous. I don't know why more games don't do it. Anyway, yeah, so there, there are some really great things that you can use as far as the inventory goes. The, yeah, I've already mentioned the rocks and the TNT. There are also trip mines, which, you know, it, it kind of speaks for itself. Basically, you choose where you put the first one, and then you walk backwards, and you can also walk to either side, so you can really angle it exactly how you want, and then you hold down the use key when you want it to end. And it's also, it takes time, so if you know there's an incoming force, you better get on it. It's going to take several seconds from start to finish, and if, if an enemy is you know, near you while you're still doing it, he can probably kill you before you're ready to fight back. So, yeah. One thing I did find a little bit annoying with this, I can respect that you can trigger your own trip mines and you gotta be careful around them, but at times, you know, you can't really make your character sort of sidestep these trip mines. So if you are, if you've just put it, if you've just placed it, there should be this sort of feature where, yeah, basically you, you, control every single little step. I don't mind that that would take more time to, you know, to properly get away from there, but sometimes I found myself being overly cautious with how I placed them just because I didn't want to blow myself up as I walked away from the trip mine. And that's just, yeah, kind of annoying and there's no real reason for it. I should mention on grenades as well, <laughs> enemy soldiers are mean grenade throwers. They are really accurate, and if you're not ready to run when you see one flying through the air, you're, you're probably dead. So, yeah. Now, the... I suppose that covers a lot of it. Now... It is a fairly short game. I completed it in 13 and a half hours, and yeah, there's, you know, the, the only thing is really the, you know, the points of fame, and I, I don't use GameSpy, I tried to get it going for the sake of this review, but I really couldn't get it working at all, and sadly there's no multiplayer support anymore, so... Yeah, I, I, that's that's for online. I don't know about, uh, you know, LAN. It's, it might. It might work. I haven't been able to, to test that. Now... The... Yeah, I, I should talk a little bit about... Basically, the, the, oh, actually, the graphics, I haven't really gotten enough into the graphics. The, 
yeah, basically they're they're average for when this was released. At points, they're below average. Like there there are games from around this time or older that look considerably better. And there are also there are a number of glitches. Like you can suddenly see through the floor or you know yeah stuff like that. I had an ally that got stuck in a wall at a point. I, sh I should mention, you can save whenever you want and as often as you want, but once you've used, I think it's maybe five saves, if you keep saving, you will re reduce your score with the points of fame. And another thing, once you've completed it, once you've completed a mission, you can replay that mission. You, know, you can't choose level by level, but you can choose the overall missions at any point later again, you know, you don't have to be careful about saving for each mission or something if you want to replay them. Now, it is in a lot of ways of authentic, there, you know, there, there are a number of details that just make it feel real, like yeah, just little little touches, actual German, you know, signage and things like that that they didn't they didn't need to put in, but they did, and it enhances the overall atmosphere. You know, there there it's it's fall, so I'm not sure the the trees should be quite as green and in full bloom as. They are, I'm not sure there are any like yellow or even slightly brownish leaves on the trees, but you know, these brownish, you know, dead leaves will suddenly, you know, be carried by the wind. Again, this, this happens mostly when it isn't raining. And at a distance, you might mistake that for enemy movement because the the Soviet troops wear brown uniforms, and you're like, oh crap, am I in enough cover, you know, am I going to get killed in a second? And the... In, in general, just seeing the, the tiniest little bit of movement might, make, might trick you into, oh, that's where an enemy is, and you quickly, you know, you get the scope out, and okay, that was just some other movement. You, you see a lot of tanks a, a little further away, and you're like, you, you bring up the binoculars, bring up the scope, or just something, and try to make sure, okay, it's just a wreck of a tank. It isn't, an, it, it's not operational, because they don't, they don't always look like a complete wreck. Like, you may have to look at the, the cannon, which will be all messed up, or you know, part of the side. Maybe the, the hatch on the top is open. Maybe there's a, a soldier lying dead up there or something. And I mean, the fact that you can see a vehicle and it isn't moving does not mean that there isn't someone in there ready to kill you. I learned that the hard way. Trust me. You, you will want to make sure that a vehicle is actually, yeah, and, and that's, that's, again, very effective. It makes you very alert, more so than a lot of other games of, of this sort, because you really do have to constantly be on the lookout. You, you do have a, you know, sort of slightly GPS-y map, which, you know, you have marked things on there, and you can always see where you are on the map, which... I can appreciate that it might be difficult without it, though I do, again, I know, I'm spoiled by Thief, but, yeah, you, you can see where you are, and, in, you know, you can see where the basic targets are and such. But you can't see enemies on the map, like, it, it doesn't show enemies anywhere on the map. It, it might show the approximate location of some enemies or some objective, but... Yeah, and there are also, you know, sometimes the movement, you know, you can look up in the sky and there might be, you know, planes flying by, or, or maybe a pigeon. You'll also encounter sometimes, you know, on, on the ground, a rat, you know. I did not see any pigeon rats, but 
I can't rule it out. So it does also have this... Again, they, they didn't need to do this because you're never supposed to kill them, although I think you can. I think I did accidentally kill one rat or something, but they're there for the atmosphere. It's kind of those are the last living things that are just going around, you know, the, 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 the city of Berlin is abandoned by its people, you know, the, there, there are soldiers, but they're hidden, and then there are these very resilient animals, so that's, that's a good detail. I believe that covers everything. Actually, yeah, I did want to talk a little bit about, you know, when, when you go into this sort of game, you know, when, that, a, a very specific, a, a specifically focused shooter, one that only has, you know, the, this real focus on sniping. I mean, yes, there are, there are, like, maybe three different submachine guns, and actually one of them is a straight-up machine gun. But beyond that, actually maybe more than three, but yeah, beyond that, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't always require the sniping. There, there were entire, excuse me, entire levels where I just went by with, you know, without sniping anyone. There, there there's, there's so much you could do with this that would be, you know, I, before I even start, I, I appreciate that what I'm about to suggest would largely require moving the chronological and physical setting of the game. But frankly, they add so little. Like I said, there's, there's very little plot, and even if you succeed, all you're doing is pushing off the Cold War a little bit. And that would be fine if it was a game of hard won you know, just barely victories, like Kane and Lynch, you know, but it's not. It's, it's a fairly average World War II shooter. You're, you're doing plenty of sabotage, rescuing plenty of people. There isn't really that much of, you know, this, yes, it's, it's in theory important at least, but yeah. Now, the, yes, so, so, I don't see why they couldn't move it outside of, so, yes, the, one thing that's obvious is more camouflage, like, do, if, if the, if the player had to wait in the same spot for a really long time, but it was like, you know, I'm talking one of these modern, like, hiding out in the desert and just wearing stuff that makes you completely invisible from, you know, I don't know, 50 meters away. And you're just lying there, and maybe barely even moving for a long time, and waiting for your target to enter the, you know, the, the, the scopes. And, and you could have some kind of thing where, you know, obviously just sitting still isn't going to be fun for that long. But maybe, like, you, you adjust something to make sure the balance is, is right. You know, your fighting urges to move just slightly to the side or the like. And you're using the mouse to maintain a certain level of balance within that area. You know, like, similar to how you interrogate in the Punisher video game from 2004. You know, maybe there are several different sniper rifles to choose from, each very specific, so you have to really get used to it. And there, there should be like a train yard where you can, you know, get used to the, you know, the details to the various ones. And, you know, maybe one is silent but doesn't have that much of a range, so you do have to get closer. Maybe one has tremendous range, but, you know, just... I don't know, maybe it takes really long to set up and put back together, so you really have to make sure you have that time, you know. 
I'd like one of them to have, like, a, a bolt action. I think, yeah, Hitman Blood Money, one of the upgrades you can buy is a bolt action. And I think it makes the, the rifle more accurate, the sniping more accurate. But it also means that if you miss with that first shot, you might not get a second one. You certainly won't get a silent second shot. And it's fantastic. These are the kinds of things that should be in a purely sniping game. You know, maybe something where you can create some sort of pathway, I guess. Like, maybe you... I don't know if you should be digging a, you know, a tunnel over time. But, yeah, let's say you have a certain amount of days to prepare for the mission. And you know basically where the target will be. So you dig a tunnel so you get into a building that will give you, you know, a fantastic, you know, overview of, you know, things like that. A very limited inventory. So, you know, you can set up traps and things, but, you know, you don't, you don't have a lot, so you'll make each of them count. You know, maybe other kinds of, you know, maybe you would have, like, mirrors on strings, so you could move them just slightly so they catch the light, making an enemy sniper believe that that's your scope and shooting at the mirror, revealing their position to you. You know, maybe, yeah, maybe a, a sort of dueling sniper, you know, maybe some levels like that, where, yeah, you would have to make sure that, you know, you took care of those snipers, Th things like that. Now, I, that does remind me of just a few things that I should, but, but yeah, but basically, what I'm trying to say is, there are too few tools in this game to completely warrant it being pure sniper game, which, again, you know, Commandos is a purely stealth game. The, the first one, there is, there's almost nothing where you can actually just go nuts and destroy a bunch of stuff. Like, you will have to blow up buildings, but that also means making sure you're far away, than, or, you know, make sure you run away once that building blows up, because there are going to be a lot of enemies. Things like that. And that game does provide a ton of different tools for you to use. You know, they're also spread over several different men in the unit. But, you know, the Green Beret, he can use a knife to kill stealthily from right by the enemy. He can carry bodies, he can dig himself into the ground and come up afterwards. He has a decoy machine, you know, and he can still throw rocks. And actually, that might be the... Expansion pack, but yeah. Now the, but but yes, this does have a few other things that I d definitely should mention. You you have a watch which, as far as I've been able to tell, is completely accurate to, you know, time. I mean, one minute in real life time will be one minute on the in-game watch. And sometimes this is important because they, there, there are certain things that will happen in the level at certain times. I wish they had done more of this. There's far too little of it. It's because it's so tense. You're, you're lying in position just waiting for something to happen. And once it happens, you're, you're completely ready. And you then have to get ready for the next thing in time for the next thing. You know, you know you only have maybe five minutes to get into the next position before you have to get ready. Or maybe you know that five minutes, you have to hold the current position for five minutes and there are going to be enemies in those five minutes. You have to take care of them before the five minutes are up. You know, things like that. Very, very cool. And another way it comes into play is the timed explosives, which are you know, you can set them from anywhere between 1 minute and 30 minutes. Now, you know, I never actually waited for 30 minutes. So, sometimes the game, if you set it really high, 
the game will sort of fast forward the time if it's like, you know, you have to bomb this thing before the end of the level, but you also have to make sure there's enough time. If you set the bomb and you do everything else in the level and then run to the exit, it will just fast forward the time, so it explodes before you, you know, move on to the next level. But there are times where you can really use it to your advantage if you have to bomb two different things in relatively close proximity. You can time it using the watch and using the time, you know, set the first one to two minutes, place it, go to the the next target, set, set it to one minute, you know, get it right with the watch. This is what, this is my watch hand. You know, set it, move away, and watch them both explode, or make something explode over here, and get over here in the time it takes, so, you know, the enemies are distracted, things like that. I believe that covers everything. Yes, so, yeah. Actually, just one more thing. The AI are really, really bad at squad combat. That is very, very much. Maybe that's why they aim so unrealistically well. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.